another lesson on surface area. Are you ready to look at some more interesting shapes and see if we can make the nets of these shapes? By the end of this lesson you should be able to use nets to work out the surface area of hexagonal prisms. Let's take a look at another type of right prism. What do you think we would call the shape? I'll give you a clue. Do you see that there are one, two, three, four, five, six sides? So this means it is a hexagon. The bases are hexagonal in shape. Now if you look at the lateral sides, there are rectangles. Do you see that the rectangles are perpendicular to the bases? This means that we are dealing with a right prism. And because the bases are hexagonal, we have a right hexagonal prism. Let's see what shapes are used to make this object. We are going to make use of an animation again. If we unfold the shape to make the net and count, we can see that it consists of two congruent hexagons and six congruent rectangles. Do you think this is the only way that we can show the net of a hexagonal prism? Let's see if we can show it another way. Look at this. This is another way to make the net of a right hexagonal prism. Do you see that it still has the same shapes? They are just laid out in a different place. Remember, there are many different ways to unfold a solid to make its net. These are only two of the ways. The number of shapes we get in the net is the same though. Two hexagons and six rectangles. That means that we need to calculate the area of the rectangles as well as the area of the hexagons. We know that the formula for the surface area of a rectangle is base times height. In this figure there are six rectangles. This means that we can write the area as six times b times h and I'll use capital H. But what about the hexagons? Can you think of a way to find the area of these hexagons? Have a look at the hexagon A, B, C, D, E, F. Could you cut this into shapes that we already know about? There are several possible cuts you could make. I'd say this is the easiest. You can divide the hexagon into six congruent triangles by drawing lines like this. These lines all intersect at the same point in the middle. All these lines look like they're the same length. What do you think? Let's measure them and check. Yes, they are all 5 centimeters. Let's compare that with the length of the sides of the hexagon. This is a regular hexagon, so I only need to measure one side. Isn't that cool? They are all the same length. So the sides of the hexagon are the same length as the length inside the hexagon. In fact, we have six equilateral triangles inside the hexagon. And if we can get the area of the triangle, we can just multiply by six. We know that the formula for the area of a triangle is half times the base times the perpendicular height of the triangle. Let's work out what the formula for the area of the hexagon is then. This should be very easy. So we can call the height, or the perpendicular height, h. We'll call the base of this triangle, b. We can write the area of this triangle as a equal to half base times height. Now we want to find the total area of this hexagon which means that it's made up of six of these triangles so we need to multiply this formula by six. 
This simplifies to 3b times h. Now that we know the area for the hexagons and the rectangles, we can work out the total surface area for this right hexagonal prism. The area of the hexagon was area equals 3bh. Now remember we have two hexagons, that would mean we need to multiply this formula by 2. This simplifies to 6bh. Now let's work out the rectangle. We know that the area was equal to 6bh. Now I'm going to write capital H. Do you see that the height here is different from the height in the triangle. That's why I'm labeling it as a capital H. The base of a triangle and the base of the rectangle is the same length, which is why the B's are the same in both. Now the total surface area is therefore given by A equal to 6BH, which is the hexagons, plus 6BH of the rectangles. Wow, that was easy, even though it looked complicated at the beginning. I think you have now seen that working out the surface area of right prisms is actually very simple if you take the shapes together in groups the way we did it here. Let's just recap what we looked at today. We saw that a prism could be opened up in many different ways to make a net of its sides. We also learned that in order to find the surface area of right prisms, we need to determine what the net of the right prism looks like. We then worked out the area of each shape which makes up the net, using the appropriate surface area formula for each shape. And then, we added the areas together. Now that you know the method for finding the surface area of a right prism, here's your task. Use the surface area formula of the hexagonal prism to work out the surface area of this right prism. In the next lesson, we will look at surface area calculations of other prisms. See you then. I'm <laughs> sorry.